how can you get out of debt and still save money? We have the expert here for you. People know her as the money maven, and she's the author of the book, Real Money Answers for Every Woman. Please welcome Patrice Washington. Hi. And how to deal without a man. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I was reading about your story, really incredible. You come from very humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. You built a multi-million dollar real estate company by the age of 25. By 25. Then the market crashed. And, right, that part. And you, yeah, <laughs> and you had to start over. So you kind of have seen life from all sides. Absolutely. I always tell people, you know, I've been passionate about financial education since I was really 19, 20 years old. But I didn't learn compassion until the market crashed and I went from that seven-figure business to literally scraping up change to feed mm -hmm. my daughter. Wow. Um, and so the passion that I have for this now and the compassion comes from a very real place. How did you get into finances anyway? Like just right. being so like smart about it at such a young age. Age. Well, I definitely didn't learn it at home. So I'm like most people where we did not have a conversation about money at home at mm. all. And I actually did all the wrong things when I got to college. Um, but uh, I got credit card debt. Estate, girl, when they all come and they, they want you to get those credit yeah. cards. When they gave you the visor and the t shirt. <laughs> yeah. That, that's yeah. what started it. Um, but I got into real estate. I was fortunate enough to have a mentor at 19 who introduced me to real estate. And then by 21, I became a broker during my senior year in college, a real estate and mortgage broker. And as I was teaching myself, I was teaching my clients and that's what helped the business really grow mm -hmm. but you mentioned it people don't talk about money at home I, my parents didn't talk to no. me about money Look, I know we didn't have much yeah but <laughs> that's Some things we all want more of but don't talk about yeah you guys talked about it earlier sex <laughs> and money yes. yeah. those two things. <laughs> What the biggest money problem that people have is? What's the biggest obstacle for people to gain wealth? One of the biggest obstacles are not knowing your numbers. See, I talk to a lot of people all the time and they want me to give them help and I start to ask them questions. Well, tell me how much you bring in. Tell me what goes out. What do you spend every month on, on this utility or that bill? And I always get people to go, um... And I go, well, is it up in the ceiling? Where, where are we looking? Because you have to know your numbers in order to create a realistic plan to get out of debt. I have a question here. So do you think people don't know their numbers because they're doing online banking and they're not like, writing it down? Is Notice that how the, she looked over oh, at me. Yeah. You guys yeah. feel that? I yeah. felt it. I because felt the heat. <laughs> some of us still keep a checkbook register and we mm -hmm. know where our My money grandmother. is going. <laughs> and so you know, look on the account online in the morning and get false figures. Well, <laughs> Why are they false? Because you don't know if somebody cashed a check it yet. It doesn't or then... update as immediately okay. as we would like it to. But I will say to each his own, I don't think that this is a cookie cutter journey. Mm -hmm. I think that each of us has to really assess what our personalities are and do what works for us. Mm -hmm. If Ryan is not as disciplined, Val, we can't. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> Three women up here. I can't win. I'm not going to win this. Okay, okay. So let's get it off of Ryan. How do we cut our expenses? Once we figure out where our money is going, how do you cut it? Well, especially if you don't have more coming in. Yeah, well, I love this whole thing about living by percentages. You guys ever heard of this? Mm -mm. Living by percentages. You a budget? Is this like right. a percentage? Well, you start with a budget, but what a lot of us do are put numbers on the budget and then go, well, I cut cable. What's, why isn't everything falling into place? And the thing is, every category on your budget needs to be allotted for with a percentage, mm -hmm. right? All right, so, so explain this graphic that we're yeah, looking at. So, for example, transportation, right? It should be about 10 to 15% of your net income every month. Okay. Well, a lot of us don't realize we're spending 30% of our income between oh. gas and our car note and the insurance. After and taxes, the maintenance, right? After, after taxes, taxes after all of your deductions. Whatever you for get in insurance. your hands is uh, what you can okay. make your budget on. So if you've been wow. doing it on gross, you're already starting behind. Right? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But you started with more that way. <laughs> Yeah, but it's nice in your head, right? But so instead of cutting cable, you may need to look for alternative ways to get to work. You may need to carpool. You may need to give that car away, you know, and do okay. something different. And so what living by percentages does is it help us it helps us take that budget but make it realistic, okay. not just this fairy tale thing. Can you pay off debt too soon? Is that even possible? It is. And people do that so all the time. So you should keep some debt. It's not that, and I'm not saying that you have to keep debt. What I'm saying is a lot of us rush into, I want to pay off the debt. I want to pay off the debt. I'm going to throw everything on it. But we don't have a plan in place to save simultaneously. Oh, so what happens okay. when an emergency comes up? 
most of us will fall back on so debt. We'll put it card. back on a credit card. So I say whatever dollar amount you have in your budget to, that you thought you were going to put towards debt, cut it in half. Maybe it'll take a little longer to pay the debt off, but that other half is going towards savings. And now if something comes up, it's an inconvenience. Mm. It's not a crisis. <laughs> right. Yes. And, and if you have well, three or four yeah. things, yeah. like what about college loans? Like G talks about college loans or yeah. people that are upside I down and they're in like massive debt, like $100,000 or more. How do you ever get yeah. out of that? Creating a plan. It has to start from a plan. So I talked to G before we came out, and G <laughs> said, I'll never get out of it. First thing is, it's a mindset, mm -hmm. right? Becoming wealthy, <laughs> paying off debt, anything that you want to do with money, it has to start in the mind. So, G, we have to change the way we speak about our finances, mm -hmm. well, and we have to acknowledge that it's possible. Well, yes, well, Patrice. So basically, <laughs> I, yes, owe, Patrice. I owe a ton of money for my law school. I have law school student <laughs> loans, and I feel like, you know, I calculated the other day, I'll be paying it off when I turn 65. So my assumption is that like I just won't own a home uh, I'll just be paying you know this debt off for the rest of my life you, it may not take the rest of your life like for a lot of people I say you know what if with your current income you can't do something maybe there's ways to add additional income that you know the old school have a debt job that's still a real thing mm. so I don't know if we want to see G at our local container store <laughs> or, <anything, but. laughs> or, or, or she could start a blog and she'll get Absolutely. advertising dollars yes. from her blog yes. okay. yeah. and we might start paying her for this job maybe <laughs> Yeah. That was good. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We